First of all, I would like to say that any yays, nays, hoops, and hollers of any sort are appreciated. Um, it's, it's not every day we get to come in here, and so we might as well take advantage of it. I think it'll be a while until I stand here again, uh, <laughs> legally, um, that is. Um, I also wanted to try this water, because why not? <laughs> so I have written no books. Um, I have no degrees. So if you don't like what I have to say, then you can write me off completely. But then again, myself and other young Vermonters, we are the future of the movement, so maybe you should listen. Um, I'm going to throw no studies or impressive facts at you. Um, I'm going to speak honestly and simply. So I started college at the University of Vermont just over two months ago. And being a true college student, I didn't write the speech until 2 o'clock in the morning last night. Um, but seriously, now I'm told the point of college is to prepare me for the real world. The question that I've been asking myself every day since convocation is what exactly is this real world I'm about to be joining? What is it going to look like in four years, and how am I going to better it? Will I be able to find a job? Who will the U.S. be at war with over drilling supplies of oil? Where will it be social unrest? And years down the line, when I have a family and they become the focus of my attention, we will be on the verge of World War III? Will we have a functioning food system, access to clean drinking water, what would be the shape of our environment? I do not know the answer to these questions, and as impossible it may be for me to predict the future, I do know the answers that I want, and I know the world that I want to live in. These are the questions that first drew me to the Second Vermont Republic, and that is why I'm here today to talk about youth involvement. And one look around this room, and let's please take a look around this room, because, well, if you're not at the convention, the Second Vermont Republic convention, you're in the wrong place. But you will notice that there are a lot of kids here, and I think the median age of this convention is a lot younger than the last one. And so if there's one thing you should notice is that the youth is listening. But before we go, <laughs> thank you. But before we go there, we must thank the architects of the movement. Thomas Naylor, Ian Baldwin, Rob Williams, and many others who have so thoroughly thought through this idea. But they have done their job. They have laid out the fight before us. But myself, my fellow college students, and the other youth who may not be fortunate enough to attend school, we have the most to gain. Not our parents, but us. We have to live with the future, and that is why we must shape it the way we desire. And there's never going to be a better time than now. Many of you have seen on the news or read in the paper, an interesting thing occurred on UVM's campus. When CNN declared that Senator Obama would be our next president, a group of 30 or so students went out in front of one of the dorms to celebrate. Their group slowly grew and as it headed down campus, and by the time it reached Church Street, it had swelled to a mob of over 3,000. Some truly wanted to celebrate Obama's victory in the streets. The rest, including myself, just wanted to be part of the excitement, because excitement and change is contagious. As the, as the mob chanted Obama's name, I couldn't help but think two things. Man, there are going to be some disappointed kids these next four years. <laughs> and second, more importantly, is that these kids want change. They want it badly and they're willing to take to the streets for it. They are smart enough to know that the f future looks bleak. Without serious change, it will only get worse. Will Barack Obama bring change as he has pledged to do? Probably. But will he solve our problems? Will he bring the change that Vermont needs? That, I seriously doubt. The system is corrupt. Every region in the country, every industry, and every lobbyist is pulling in a different direction, and it will tear. It has torn, and up until now we've patched it, we have thrown some money at it, and we've gone back to watching Monday Night Football. But my friends, the ship is sinking, and it is going down with us or without us. But we in Vermont, we can get out now, we, the youth of Vermont, with the help of our fathers, we can design a future on a scale we can manage. Every generation needs a battle, and I think a free Vermont is ours. We can set an example to the rest of America, to the rest of the world. We can show that sustainability, community, and a healthy economy are not only possible, but interdependent. We can support our farmers, not put obstacles in their ways. We can keep our strongest citizens at home, not fighting abroad. 
We can spend our tax dollars on what we want, like teaching our children what we think is right and not what the government says is right, or protecting the environment so they can enjoy the great outdoors like we do today. We can have a government that focuses on gross domestic happiness, not their corporate cronies. We can do this. We can all have a say in how it's done. But to do this, we must first free Vermont. Thank you.